Joining us now from Daily Faceoff and the Frankly Speaking podcast, he is an NHL insider and very pleased to announce he's going to be joining us on Fridays this year. And uh, as news merits, Frank Saravelli, and you were here in Vancouver last week, joined us in the GoGo Sports studio, went off to talk to some Vancouver Canucks and got a fascinating uh, couple of answers there from Coach Talkett and Thatcher Demko on the Frankly Speaking podcast. For those who missed it, tell us what you learned. Yeah, it was really interesting to get a vibe check of where everyone's at. And I actually thought the most enlightening, naturally he's a good talker, but Ian Cole, um, to really explain for a guy that's every year for the last nine years, not only has his team made the playoffs, but he's had an authentic, true chance to win the Stanley Cup. Last year he's with the Canes, previously he was with the Abs, et cetera, et cetera. Go down the list winning back-to-back cups at the pens. He had lots of options. Sorry, last year he was with the, uh, the Lightning. I mean, look, all those teams have been in the mix the last handful of years. And so why the Canucks? It was the first question I asked him. You could go anywhere. Clearly he has a longstanding relationship with Jim Rutherford and, and Patrick Alvine, but and knows Rick Tockett. But the real answer is because he got a sense from them on July 1 that they're sick of losing. They want to turn this around and it's been 10 years of this. I don't need to preach. You guys already know this, but to hear someone verbalize that we need to change this. That was incredibly significant. I think because everyone in Vancouver has been waiting for that to happen. Yeah. I was going to ask you and we'll get on to the other uh, couple things I wanted to mention in, in, uh, frankly speaking, but as you told us last week, you've known Rick Tockett for a long time. Obviously a competitive guy. Uh, there's a portion of the podcast where Rick Tockett gets off the bus after a road trip at 2 a.m. And the assistant coaches basically have to talk him off the ledge. He's on the street corner. He's still angry about the game. Last year, there wasn't a whole lot at stake. He 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 knew he was coaching a non-playoff side when he took over. And it was about setting things up for this year. How do you think he's going to deal emotionally with potentially an uneven season or potentially an up and down inconsistent season? I think really well, because he has, as he mentioned, the support group that's able to tell him. And I got to tell you that unprompted those players bringing up the idea of playing for Adam foot and the Sedins being around at practice and Mike Yo has all of this experience. Sergey Gonchar, like these are, you know, top level Hall of Fame caliber players. Rick Tockett, no slouch himself. Um, that to find that even keel, I hate the cliche, um, but to have someone that can kind of walk you back off the plank, it's game two. They lose 6 1. And he's standing on the street corner at two o'clock in the morning, basically talking to himself. Relax is what he was told. And so that pressure of stepping into a Canadian market for the first time in his career as a player or coach, he's been around 33 years. um, That's a real thing. And I also think when you step into a role like that and things are maybe at times worse than you thought, body language, compete, all these different things that we've talked about for the last couple seasons with the Canucks, practice habits, attention to detail. It can be daunting and overwhelming, but when you have six months to get your feet wet or now 10 months, whatever it is since he took over, there are no surprises anymore. You can begin to make changes and you can begin on day one of training camp to start to instill some of those things that you wanted to see for a while. So um, I think he's going to manage it well. Um, I just, he doesn't, there's no BS. Like you, you heard him talk this week, you know, some not secrets, but Hey, here's how things are going to work this year. And for better or for worse, that's his game plan. And he's just going to go out and chase it. The veterans of uh, of this team that have been around have said all the right things about turning things around and winning games. Quinn Hughes has said it. That's your Demko has said it. And it's good to have guys like Ian Cole around because they've done it. Um, they can maybe guide them through any potholes along the way this season um, and allow them to, to stay on track. But w- what level of desperation do you think this team has got versus 
focus. Those are, and you want to have a little bit of desperation, but of course you don't want to be so desperate that you feel like every game is, is, uh, is the end of the playoffs if you lose. So uh, what, what level of desperation do you think these veterans of this team are at? It's pretty high, but I think it's healthy. Um, that I asked that kind of same exact question to Rick Tockett of knowing that you need to get off to a good start, knowing that there's so much riding on that, that this team can't turf its season by mid November again, or else that can be pretty daunting to step into, but seems pretty process driven. And it seems like when you listen to Ian Cole, that sort of stacking up a bunch of marginal victories on each other they're probably going to help this team get off to the start that it needs. Um, I also think maybe I'm absolutely crazy, but there's probably something to be said for almost everything that could go wrong has at some point, this team has to figure it out. Right. Am I nuts in thinking that? They're do some good luck too. You're, you're talking to two scarred individuals on that topic. in a scarred market for yeah, sure. Absolutely, but there's good luck that it, that is deserved to them. Now they've had these great rookie performances over the last handful of years, so I guess that's sort of some good luck in, in seeing a, a young player jump into the lineup and be good. But I think a, a bigger picture good luck thing is is probably due for them as well. Yeah, I mean. How about the conversation with Thatcher Demko? Like he, I, I don't know how public this was and I couldn't get a sense, but I mean, he said point blank that his groin was nearly completely torn and needed surgery. Like my sense is, and just look at his numbers. He's never had numbers like that in his career. That happened before the season started and he tried to gut through it. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a, and not pinning it on him, but maybe that's a reason why they didn't make the playoffs. One reason why. Just having a healthy Thatcher Demko should get this team pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. he, he's my pick to win the Vezina this year. Wow. Oh, wow. I uh, think he's that wired in, and I think this summer for the first time in a long time, he was able to sort of completely heal and enter, the, enter camp with a game plan to feel optimal uh, by puck drop. That hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, and, and you're right, Frank. I'd not seen it reported with that degree of gravitas in terms of the groin injury and almost requiring surgery. And of course we'll be monitoring his workload here this year, because I think as it stands with a lot of NHL goaltenders, we've come to learn that, you know, two out of three is probably optimal. Anything more than that, you're flirting, you're fl flirting with some problems. So and I, I did ascertain what I think the ideal is in terms of a split. I think they're looking at 55 yeah, that's yep. about right. Yeah. So yeah. You know, a little, little less than two out of three is probably great. But that brings us to the defense in front of them, Frank. And, and you know, we've talked to goaltending experts in the past, guys like Kevin Woodley and others who talk about it's not just the games. It's just how busy are you? How difficult are the games? And, boy, the How difficult have made... are the practices with Ian Clark? That true. A, that guy is a grinder. Is he ever. And I just even being at UBC last week – I happened to get there really early and saw it firsthand. Like, it is no joke. Ian Clark, mm -hmm. he demands a lot. He does. Tockett said yesterday, guys better get used to playing with all sorts of different partners because we're going to be defense by committee this year, not necessarily set pairings. How does that strike you? I like it. He was honest uh, and brought it up a few times that the Canucks played 16 defensemen last year. 16. Mm -hmm. Some teams don't see like 16 forwards in a season. We used to think that 12 was a lot. I remember when, when that made headlines, 12 and 13 was a lot, and then to get to 16. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's hoping that mostly everyone's healthy and that the additions of Susie and now a full year of Philip Ronick and Cole – will help cut down on that. And theoretically, you know, you'd like to be at nine or 10, but some of these other guys are going to see time, Breeze Bois and McWard and all, like they're, they're all going to be in the mix. Um, but I like that. It's like, no, no, you don't get to just get comfortable and have a security blanket in the guy that you play with. And all of a sudden, if that, gets thrown to the wolves for whatever reason, because everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face, 
you got to be ready to adjust. You've got to be ready to play with anyone. And so I think taking away that comfortability factor is probably a really healthy thing. Marvelous stuff, Frank. Uh, great insight from last week. It was fantastic seeing you here, and uh, we'll catch up again Friday. See you guys soon. This is a Carousel Price clip brought to you by Jason Dot Mortgage.